The question is, what is going on in the world today? We are bombarded with terrible news, one worse than the other. A biblical perspective. It is a race, and a race with cheerleaders. Hebrews 12 says, they are for, and they are is there because the previous chapter told us about the heroes of the faith. Therefore, let us also, seeing such a cloud of witnesses that they overcame, lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience, he were with patience, the race that is set before us. Hebrews 12, the context is the cloud of witnesses and the ecclesia displacing the spiritual powers. Look at this verse, it's dynamite. God has promised once and for all, key word, for all, I will not only shake the systems of the world, but also the unseen powers in the heavenly realm, so that only what is unshakable will remain since we have received an unshakable kingdom, we should be extremely thankful. Look at what is there on the screen. God is saying, once and for all, I will shake the systems of the world and also the unseen powers in the heavenly realm. You know, look at what is being shaken. Healthcare, max out, inadequate, government, inept, military, I mean, the mightiest army in the world defeated by a seventh century band of tribal people, security in our cities, uh, education and finances is coming next. That's what the worldwide pandemic has accentuated. There is a shakeup. We live in an evil day. And an evil day, as we all know, is because the gates of hell, which is a physical place, to the principalities and powers that operate in the heavenly realm, establish the gates of Hades on earth. The gates of Hades and the gate of hell are two different things. Hell is a physical place. The gates of Hades is the manifestation of hell on earth. This is what is going on today, not only in Afghanistan, you know, but all over the world. I mean, the gates of Hades are there. But God, every evil day is followed by the day of the Lord. We see that in the book of Acts, what happened in the garden. I mean, when the prince of darkness came, was followed by Pentecost. The persecution unleashed all over Judea and Samaria resulted in Antioch and so forth. We see that you know, in the book of Acts, always the day of the Lord that results in incredible growth and expansion, not without pain. And that is because heaven, which is the counterpart of a physical place to hell, and the ecclesia that is battling against the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, bring the kingdom of God to earth. You see the contrast and the parallel. So in that context, it's so important, folks, to understand that what is going on in the world today, yes, the devil tries to hijack it, the news tries to tell us he's doing it, but the Bible, which is our guide, is saying, I will do it once and for all. I will shake the systems of the world. I will shake the political systems. I will undress them and show their ineptitude. Everything that is there is being shaken by God. And I submit to you respectfully and not dogmatically that even the weather. Have you ever wondered why Jesus, the Son of God, who is the creator, because he was with God in the beginning, he had to rebuke the storm. Rebuke is what he did to demons. He could have told to the storm, hey, chill down. Okay, guys, pass on the coffee or the tea. But he engaged, he rebuked. 
because I believe there were demonic forces behind that storm that tried to make the boat capsize and the apostles perish. And we have seen this, especially in Argentina, where we have the prayer fair. And we will ask the intercessors, ask the God for an intercessor weather, which was clear, nice, no wind, no mosquitoes, no flies. I mean, it was heavenly there because we, they cleared the heavenly places. Today, everything is being shaken and it's painful. No question about that. But just survey the scriptures, how often wars, famines, hunger, persecution, civil war, earthquakes. You see that reported in the scriptures and you see a spiritual breakthrough. It's a mystery, don't ask me why, but it's there. Today, everything is being shaken. I mean, the mystique, of militarized religion in the Middle East that is romanticized by the foolish elites in the West is being exposed for this cruelty and evil road that drives it. And it doesn't stop there. It will get into the financial world. How many soccer teams, how many polo teams are owned by that pot of money? How much of that has an influence on Wall Street? I mean, folks, something is being shaken. But this is the good news. It's the Lord who is doing the shaking. So in that context, we go to Daniel's vision of the end times. You know, the, the system looks formidable, but it has feet of clay. So the Bible says that the stone, not cut by human hands, we believe that is us, the ecclesia, it strikes, and it strikes it in the clay. In clay, as you have heard me teach from the book of Transformation, I believe is populism. It comes from the ground up. It gives a false sense, a false ground to stand on. Populism is what politicians use. I'll do this, I'll do that, get me elected. Then they get elected and they cannot do it. And so God will use the ecclesia to strike it right there for his most vulnerable. But because God loves the world, he will not allow them to fall into chaos. The ecclesia, that stone will grow and it will go into a mountain. And that mountain will keep expanding until it has filled the whole earth. Folks, we stand on a threshold of opportunity. But if we go to the passage that we are studying, the therefore at the very beginning is the therefore about the heroes of the faith, that they suffer persecution, they face death. Some of them were killed, but they overcame. And we have to keep in mind, God is superintending the shaking. A new order is coming, and that will be the order of goodness, peace, and joy, as we have seen there. So the answer, and God already nudged us in this direction, right? As a theme for our upcoming conference is Revelation 12, 11. We are going to overcome the devil and his demons and the spiritual unseen powers that Hebrews 12, 26 talks about, and the world system that they have co-opted. Yes, the ecclesia shall overcome them by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and also because we are willing to fight to the finish. Not everybody will be alive at the end of the fight, but our Lord, and his army will be victorious. And that's why, you know, when we're envisioning the conference with a seven sphere, you know, the blood of the lamb in the morning. And we have done a decent job of explaining that the blood has redeemed more than just souls. That is not to take people to heaven only, it's to bring heaven down to earth. Then the word of our testimony with case study after case study, 
if indeed demonic forces can co-op storms, no wonder Ida, the hurricane, hit New Orleans, okay, where a beachhead for the kingdom is being established. God may be silent, but he's never absent. God is overseeing everything there. Who knows what is being shaken? Well, we know what is being shaken. The systems that the principalities and power co-opted. But the key is not loving our lives even unto death. Now put that together with these factors for transformation. Culture, when it finds a community, produces a movement. The kingdom of heaven and ecclesias everywhere Ecclesias everywhere. That is what we envision to be launched by the hundreds of thousands will produce a worldwide movement. Now look how this passage connects with Revelation 12, 11. God says, I'll be shaking things, okay? And only that which is unshakable will remain. I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail the ecclesia, but it says, as we lay down our lives in absolute surrender. Look how that connects with Revelation 12, 11, folks. And they overcame sight by the blood, by the word, but because they didn't love their lives even unto death. I believe that God is working in all of us and he's asking us, the question that he asked Poncho when he first became a Christian, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to roast marshmallows and sing Kumbaya? Are you going to plant a church and be happy with feeling the pews? Or are you going to go beyond that? And to go beyond that, we have to despise our lives. We have to despise what we have. The characteristics of the Babylonian system which go back to the Tower of Babel, okay, in Genesis chapter 11, are very similar to the world system. We will build a city for ourselves, a center of power, okay? Number two, we will reach heaven from an earthly platform. Humanism will inform theology. That's what is going on today. And we will make ourselves the name and the object of fear. Just watch the news and you have it there. And that's what the Babylonian system is all about. And above all, we will not be scattered all over the earth, which God told Adam and Eve, go and take this to the ends of the earth. It's imperialistic. That is the system, whether it is evil running finances in Wall Street or evil running militaristic religious people in the Middle East, I mean, it's imperialistic. That is the Babylonian system. But we shall overcome. Look at this passage. This is God speaking to the Ecclesia. Those from among you will rebuild the ancient ruins. You will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called the repairer of the breach. That deals with all the iniquities in society. And look at the cherry in the Coke. You will restore the streets in which to dwell. That's the biggest fear today. That our streets are not safe. God says, you will do it. How? By Revelation 12, 11. And now here comes our command. How should we guard our hearts? After God tells us, once and for all, I will shake the systems of the world. Once and for all, I will bring down the unseen spiritual powers. It's there in the word of God, right? And only that which is unshakable will remain. Mm then we should be extremely thankful and offer to the Lord, look at this, the purest worship that delights his heart as we lay down our lives in absolute surrender 
filled with awe. For our God is a holy, devouring fire. Folks, listen to the Holy Spirit. Would you like to delight the Lord? Amen. Would you like the Lord to say, give me more of that? Can I have seconds? He says, we must lay down our lives, our bank account, our time, our sphere of influence. We lay it down, not in surrender, absolute surrender. All of you, Lord, nothing of me. Fill with awe. What, me, what does that imply? That when you surrender, it's not the end, but it's the beginning of something that you are in awe oh, as to what God will do that I don't know because I have surrendered. Why? Because our God is a holy, devouring fire that will burn any and everything that is unholy. Folks, this is the word of the Lord for us. This is what God has been speaking to me so powerfully, so clearly. I mean, it has been so, so overwhelming that I'm having like a new birth, so to speak. So folks, I want you to listen to the Holy Spirit now. That verse was there all the time. I never noticed. He is shaking once and for all. That's the end time revival. The systems of the world. Some translations say, I will shake heaven and earth. But that doesn't make sense because the heavens are eternal and the earth is eternal. It's the systems of the world and the unseen spiritual powers. So that only that which is unshakable will remain. And you can see this with the persecution that hit Judea and Samaria. Everything that was not holy, even the apostles in cahoots with the old covenant, he shook them. Any branch that doesn't bear fruit, my father will prune it. God is a devouring fire, folks. And the pandemic is not getting any better. And I think it will not get better until all the shaking has been done. And the next frontier is the financial world. And you look at the pot of billions of dollars that are just within fighting distance of militant jihadists can be challenging. So God may blow that up before they get there. I don't know. But this I know, that we are to offer the praise that delights his heart. And that praise is all of you, nothing of me. I surrender all, Lord. I surrender my life. I surrender my hopes, my dreams, my expectations, my name, my prestige myself, my marriage, my family. I surrender all, but that is not the end. And now I get in awe. What will God do with that? And if you can embrace that, folks, we're going to live through the most exciting, exhilarating, riveting, thrilling season in our lives. We could well see the return of our Lord. And that's why Ecclesia and the manifest presence of Jesus, two people, that's why we need to bathe in prayer at the conference. Lauren Cunningham told me uh, six years ago, Ed, it's no coincidence that you are in Silicon Valley. You said, could it be that God is doing what he's doing so that we will get here in Silicon Valley, boom, and go all over the world with Ecclesia everywhere. No one the entire world has been aware of mortality. No one the entire world has been made aware of the ineptitude of government. 
No one the entire world has reached the conclusion that dialing 911 is not a guarantee that something good will happen to you. God is shaking, but God is not absent. So, Father, I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the Ecclesia, and I pray that you baptize us with the Holy Spirit now, Lord, so that you can inform and lead our prayers. I pray, Lord, that we will take the scripture to heart and we will be ushered into that company of the Ecclesia, of those men and women that overcame, that were struck down but never destroyed, pressed on every side but never imploded, persecuted but never forsaken. I, those that were thrown down and they got up. Lord, I pray that your anointing will come upon us because you are a devouring holy fire and you will burn everything in our mind, in our soul that aligns against your purposes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.